Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, I hope you're all doing well tonight. I moved my camera around a little bit because today I was cleaning in here, that's why my hair is up. Um, I'm moving stuff around and trying to organize things in my office. So first and foremost, like I say in all my YouTube videos, thank you for coming, thank you for the support. Um, I did put a video up yesterday, if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. It's just basically telling you some of the changes that are going on in my channel where I'll be offering longer readings each month starting in November um, where I will offer the reading here and then an extended version for those who donate um, to my PayPal um, and that information is all listed in the video I did yesterday so check that out if you are not a subscriber consider checking out my videos and letting me know like if you want to subscribe or hit the like button for any of the videos that you enjoy and if you hit that notification bell as well it definitely helps my channel and it will also give you alerts of when I put new content up because besides the astrology videos, I will be doing bonus content on this channel as well in the coming months. So look for that. I also want to let you know that I have submitted my Patreon page for review. I'm hoping to hear by the end of this evening when this video goes up. So if you're interested, go search Parlay the Spirit under Patreon. There is a very limited number of slots for each tier. So I think the top three tiers are limited as well as some of the bottom tiers. So um, make sure that if you're interested in any of the content that I offer on that Patreon channel that you definitely check that out. So the reading that I'm going to be doing now is actually going to be dated. It's going to be listed as November, but as we all know, time is just irrelevant, right? It doesn't matter um, the month. It's not necessarily for just month of November 2019. Um, someone can watch it a year later and it may pertain to them. If it resonates with you, great. If it doesn't resonate with you, go check out your other signs, your other, you know, all the planet alignments and all that. I am not an astrology guru. I am an intuitive psychic medium. So I'm not very versed in the astrology charts and all that information. But I do know for me personally, when Cancer, which is my sign, doesn't resonate with me, sometimes Gemini does. Um, so um, just putting that out there so that you understand. Okay. So the reading that we're going to do tonight is for Aries. And like I said, I will be doing the video here, um, and then I will shut this video off, and then I will do an extended version in a separate video for those who want to purchase it. For the month of November 2019, when this video is going up for, the donation amount for the extended version of this video or any of the videos coming is $5.55. Once you send that PayPal, just put a note for what the sign is, which one you want the extended version, and I will send you the unlisted link through YouTube. So, I am using a mermaid deck for this reading. Um, any cards that happen to fall out for Aries, I will keep on the board. I'm probably going to be using this deck and then the, I think it's called, don't know what, the Jerry Hicks, Esther and Jerry Hicks Vortex cards for any type of clarification or affirmations or positive manifestation cards. Sometimes I'm drawn to do that. So Aries, I already have one card that came out with Soul Cage, which right now the energy is a collective for a lot of people out there are soulmates and twin flames or twin souls, if you believe in that, where a lot of them are going to be coming together um, and there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things going on energetically. So the Soul Cage just fell out. So I just, what I do is I shuffle the deck and I wait for cards to fall out and then I will draw some cards. So. Um, as I'm shuffling the cards, I will let you know any of the information to reach me is listed below in the comments. I mean, in the bio below, um, I have all my PayPal information, my um, links to my other social media sites, as well as I think I listed my Amazon wish list, as well as my P.O. box, because I've had a lot of clients and people who have met me through YouTube ask if they could send me a postcard or a letter because you know for instance I had someone who had their son commit suicide I would say about six months ago through YouTube they found my suicide souls videos I think I split it up into three videos and they emailed me actually because they looked for my email and sent me this beautiful email of how their video how my videos um, touched them in regards to the grief to their son um, taking his own life so for me, that's huge. Um, so if you're interested in sending me a postcard or anything, my PO box information is listed below, as well as my email information for private readings and my PayPal for the extended version and any other information you need to reach me. 
So Aries, I'm sorry, my phone went off because I forgot to put it on vibrate. Sorry about that. All right, so let's see. Aries, I feel a very strong soulmate energy right now while I'm laying these cards out, which I usually don't do very many love readings in the past. If you look at my YouTube video history, um, I deal a lot with self-esteem and self-worth issues, and um, I didn't really dabble into the love readings, but in the last four or five months since I've been working on my insecurities, um, with someone that I met that's drawing it out in me, um, I tend to get a lot of different things in regards to uh, soulmates or twin souls. So bear with me. So you got the soul cage card, which is basically, um, I'll show you the deck. It's, it's the soul, it's the soul cage card, right? It's about restrictions. And the way I like to describe this card, this deck is my mermaid deck. This is an amazing deck. The artist, if anyone is interested, I'll show you the book. Now, I don't use books when I do readings because I'm an intuitive reader. I read for the collective or I read for those who I'm meant to read for, so I don't read tarot. But it's The Oracle of the Mermaids by Lucy Gavendish. This is the book that came with it, which I never use, unless Spirit guides me to use the book. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful deck. So this card, just so you know, comes out when it has to be a soulmate or a twin flame. Or a twin soul is what I call them. Um, this card normally is for restrictions. But for me, this is two people that are not in the same location. So this is a soulmate, twin soul, very, very strong vibe where they're not together. So this is a long distance uh, relationship. And right next to it... This beautiful, beautiful card, Dreams, came out next to it. So the Dreams card is a card that is about telepathy, tele for me, okay? It's usually telepathic, vivid dreams, the connection that you have with this person. Now, normally soulmates for me, just so you know, soulmates are somebody that you're connected to, that you have a purpose in your life, and they don't always stay with you. Um, it just depends on the... It depends on the connection. Now, twin souls is a different different story because twin souls, which they call twin flames, um, is one half of your soul. So I'm getting very strong, not soulmate vibe, but I'm getting a very strong twin soul vibe. Telepathic dreams. So one of you or both of you, whoever's reading this, because you can roll verse, uh, change the roles if it's not you it could be your significant other that i'm talking about or the twin soul um you can feel one another or one could feel if one is more awakened than the other which is a lot of the case right now um they will feel and see you in dreams and wonder why they have this amazing connection with you because some people that aren't fully awakened sometimes are very confused by why they have this strong strong energy towards you so now the card that came out next to it which is one of one of the most I don't know. I, I love turtles. It's about arrival. It's about a journey ending and a new one beginning. So you could see the mermaid, right? What is she doing? She's riding with the turtle. Isn't that beautiful? So with this card, in, in regards to the other two cards, is that the, the, whoever I'm reading for, Aries, is, is making an effort... To connect with the person that's not in the same location as them. So the distance, trying to pull the distance together, trying to make it so that it comes to fruitation, so that you're together. Um, and amazingly enough, I didn't even look down at the card next to it, but the Aphrodite card came out. And I'll show it to you, and then I'll explain to you what it means. This is the Aphrodite card. Penguins. I mean penguins. I don't know why I said penguins. Dolphins. Why did I have penguins in my mind? Dolphins are very sexual, right? Not a lot of people look at them that way, but they are very sexual. So here's Aphrodite, right? And her beauty and her, and her. I mean, look at the light behind her and her body shaping and the light and just the dove and just an amazing, an amazing energy from this card. And the way it's laid out next to the twin souls and the connection and the telepathy and the dreams and the connection this card basically means 
it's the guidance that it's all going to work out. It's it's meant to be. It's it's divine union. This connection, Aries, that you have with whomever your person is, is something that has already been predetermined. And it's going to happen in a way that's going to be life-altering for both of you. And then the other card is reflections. Because what happens is... When you meet this person, or if you've already met them, you contemplate in your mind, like, how can I possibly have this attachment? I don't want to say it's really an attachment, but it feels like that for, for human form. How can I have this attraction, attachment, obsessive almost thoughts to this person when they're in a completely different place and we've never physically been in the same location? Well, the reason that is, is because we're all made up of energy. And if your soul recognizes the other half of your soul, which is what happens with twin souls, there's nothing you can do. It's predestined. You guys are, I mean, you might not be made to be together in the 3D, which is what we live in right now. But spiritually in the 5D, you are already connected. So not every twin soul or soulmate make it together in this life, right? I mean, we hear it all the time because it's a really, especially the twin soul connection, the union that people talk about. And everybody has their own opinion on YouTube and on the internet. And, and I am a completely different person about it. I have very different views than most people on YouTube or on the internet to begin with, which I probably will do another video on it if anyone is interested. But just so you know, I don't believe every twin soul is meant to be together in the 3D. Now in the 5D, yes. But some people don't work through their shit to be together. So it's a really hard path to follow when you're on that twin soul path if you haven't worked through all your garbage. Because if you come together, and this is why you always hear about the runner and the chaser when it comes to twin souls. There really isn't any such thing as a runner or a chaser. But, but the reason why we associate with that, with the twin soul, is because what happens is... The twin souls, okay, they're, it's one soul split into two. So I'm going to use my hands. So you have these two souls that all of a sudden now they recognize each other, whether it's in person or energetically, like if they don't live in the same country, state, whatever. What happens is if they're still working through, and I don't like to use the word karma because I don't necessarily think everything is karma. I think a lot of it has to do with past life stuff, not karmic where we basically didn't finish something. And I don't necessarily want to say it's karmic. There is some karmic. But for me, it's like just things that were never finished. So what can happen is when you meet somebody, they have insecurities or depression or anxieties in this life because they didn't complete or they didn't do something with you in another life because they let things get in the way and they never finished it. And then here you guys are again. So I'll use me as an example. I have very bad that's my dog i have two dogs just if you don't know already and you follow my channel i have two dogs and they tend to walk around a lot so i apologize pugsley will sometimes he's my he's my uh come here pugs he's my uh velcro pug he sometimes will come over here and want my attention so you'll see me petting him and stuff um so what'll happen is if you haven't worked through like me and my experience i haven't worked through my insecurities I'm 95% there, but I have some insecurities in regards to abandonment issues with men. And that's been my whole life story since I was a kid. I've worked through my unconditional love shit with my mom. And that's just one of the things that I haven't worked through. I'm just explaining this to you so that whoever's watching this video or who this resonates with, the collective group that this resonates with will understand. I met my person. Um, I thought I met my person before this person, I will admit. A long time ago but that was a false person and was not somebody I just was so gung-ho on finding unconditional love or that person that I fell for things that I shouldn't have fallen for and I was a lot less awakened than I am now but this person that I've met by meeting them energetically because they're my other half it brought up a lot of insecurities that I thought I had already dealt with and one of them I'll explain to you so you understand. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh shit, because you've already met this person and you're wondering why it's like this back and forth crap, right? Because that's what happens. Because you think you're crazy. You do. You think you're crazy. Just be prepared. You think you're crazy. 
and you're not crazy. It's a normal thing because you're bringing out, I mean, you're both the same soul. You're working through shit. For me, I am not a jealous person. I am very, very secure in my own energy. And what I mean by that is I'm very independent. I've been single or I was single before I met this person for almost six years, five and a half about. I was perfectly fine with being like that for the rest of my life. I really was. And I'm not having any expectations about where this is going to go. I just know this person's my other person. This is the other half of who I am. Where that's going to go, I hope it goes where I want it to go and it becomes union in this 3D and not like, you know, just the 5D. And that's why I'm working through my shit now before we meet in person because I think that we both genuinely love and care for each other and we deserve this chance of being together. But I need to not be a jealous and secure person. And I'm learning to work through those issues that aren't his fault, aren't my fault. They're just part of the product of my life up until now. And so by meeting your other half, it brings up things in you that you haven't worked through. So it could be bringing up things for him as well that I don't know about that he has to work through. But you don't want to come together when you haven't worked through those things that you recognize in yourself once you meet them energetically because what happens is all these people you hear about running and chasing, the reason why they do that is because you have that magnetic connection, whether you meet in person or not, and all of a sudden, especially if you're long distance, you're like, holy shit, like it blows your mind, right? This attraction, and the way I can describe it to you is most people think it's sexual, like it's like a old oh, lusty thing. Well, that's not even remotely correct. Our souls is a sexual energy, but it's way beyond human sex. It's like this connection that I cannot describe unless you've felt it before. On top of that, all you want to do is be with this person. And it doesn't have to be just sexual. It's just in general. You just It's almost like you just want to come together as one. And it's like so intense. So what happens is people meet that person and they end up going with them. And it becomes toxic. And then it's over with. So, I mean... That's just what happens. So you want to work through your shit. So you are going to have to work through your stuff if you haven't met this person yet. So Aries, this is where I'm going to end the reading. If anyone is interested in the extended Aries reading, please look at the information below. Once you send your PayPal, um, the private link will be sent to you. And thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed this reading and have a blessed rest of your day. Thank you.